today I'd like to present your vision for BioStream. It's a bit of an intense topic, so I apologize in advance if I kill the moods. But uh, wars are bad, right? People die. But it's normal. It's a war. Now, what if I told you that half of the soldiers could, who died could have survived? In Ukraine alone, that would have been 40,000 lives. That's like 26 times more than deadly car crashes in the UK. Now, how can we reduce this death toll in half? It's not a new medicine or a fancy piece of armor or yet another drone. It's very simply with basic monitoring and geolocation. At the moment, soldiers don't have any kind of tracking. They get injured, they lose consciousness, they bleed out and they die without anybody knowing where they are or what's happening to them. Biostream solutions to that is a very simple wristband. No user interface, no screen. It detects through an algorithm and an array of sensors the main medical emergencies, and then it sends an alert securely to nearby medics for intervention. So, unlike any other wearable on the market, it doesn't need a phone. It doesn't just collect the information, it processes it, analyzes it, and then stores it for future refinement of the algorithm. We like to dream big, but sometimes it's good to be pragmatic, so our solution is low cost. The next best thing on the market is 11,000 per soldier. We aim at 300 pounds plus a software license. So I'd love to tell you how large the defense market is, how tense the current geopolitical situation, but I probably have less than a minute left, so instead I'm going to focus on the fact we're in the prototyping phase. Um, we work with top-level government advisors from healthcare, defense, in the UK, the US, Estonia, Poland, Ukraine. We have a proof of concept secured in Ukraine, where the main goal will be to collect as much data as possible to fuel the algorithm. And, you know, in the end of the day, we're a data intelligence company, right? But finally, we very much intend for Biostream to be dual use with the range of applications that broadens every day. So we're Biostream. I'm Sophia, a repeat exited founder. Chris is an amazing med tech engineer with a mind for innovation. He's sitting right here. And Mikita is currently not with us because he's in Ukraine. He's a tech entrepreneur turned commanding officer when the war started. If you'd like to get involved, if you'd like to write about us, if you'd like to invest, please feel free to get in touch. Thank you. Sophia, great presentation, and it's a really exciting uh, technology that you're developing. So my first question to you would be, what is it about you, about Sophia, that drove you to invent this? Why did you found the company? It's a very good question. Um, after I exited my last company, I went on to do an executive MBA in Oxford, where uh, one of my classmates was actually Mikita. So in between modules, every five weeks, we'd have one week on campus, and he would go back to the battlefield in between. And I asked him about the literal pain points they have. And he mentions they lose so many soldiers for no reason, not, no le le lethal injuries, just because they don't know where they are, what's happening. That's how it started. Couldn't let, leave that unsolved, you know? Sophia, thank you for the, the wonderful pitch. Um, I'm curious to know, how, what's the status quo like today? How does the military track and sort of solve this pain point? There's nothing at the moment. This is the problem. You have things for elite units, special forces, very expensive equipment. So like jackets that detect, you know, impact or, but this is just not affordable to deploy in mass for the infantry. So yeah, this is the main issue. Can you talk us through the cost component? Because I saw on one of the slides sure. you said low cost. So yeah. how is the device currently assembled? So first of all, it communicates, um, it piggybacks onto the existing communication systems. So the, the radios that the soldiers are carrying. So we're not creating a whole new communications channel, which is one of the most expensive components in other technologies. And the other thing is um, we went really kind of low tech. What's innovative is really the algorithm, the way that we treat the information to actually diagnose conditions like hemorrhage, which is 80% of the preventable death. Um, but there's no like screen, there's nothing expensive in the actual hardware. And how does, the, how does it normally work then on the battlefield in a workflow? Does the system then alert someone at sort of base camp to come and retrieve them? Yes. How is so normally how it would work is the medics are situated anywhere between point zero and 30 miles away from the front line. 
Um, and what we do is we send a text message through the radio of the soldier to the medics and the commanding officers that can give the order to go and evacuate. Or, and that's another use case, is if it's too late, unfortunately, it's good to know as well because you're not going to risk the lives of medics going in for nothing. Mm -hmm. Sophia, final question. Uh, how are you going to get this into the hands of uh, governments outside of Ukraine? So we're talking right now, one of our advisors, uh, Rupert Jones, is the former CEO of the British Army, and he's very helpful in all the procurement processes. We've started conversations with many countries already, even though we're very early stage. Um, procurement is about many things, but right now it's about the urgency of war. So going to markets in Ukraine is much, much faster now than it used to be for any defense application. So that's the plan for now. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very Thank, much. You. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.